Shalom, shalom. Karibuni sana to today's broadcast. My name is John Mwangi. I would like to invite you to like, follow, and subscribe to Slice of Today's social media platforms. That is Slice of Today in Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, and Twitter. Slice underscore of today in Instagram. At the end of this broadcast, you shall see an invite from my brother for you to be added to Slice of Today WhatsApp group. There is also Slice of Today app from Google Play Store. You can subscribe your email to Slice of Today WordPress post. As long as it's today, you shall be getting content. Remember, this is the month of May, the fifth month of the year 2021. There is an ongoing book tour. Check out in Instagram for snapshots and extracts for the book and let us flow together. It's always a pleasure and an honor to bring God's word to you. It's not a light thing. I hope that it is a blessing to your life. I hope that it ministers to you and it leaves you better than the way you found it found you let's pray our dear and heavenly father we thank you for yet another opportunity to hear your word we receive it with faith we receive it with joy and thank you because you shall put it into practice we shall exercise what your word directs us to do we desire to be good and wise builders building on you the sure foundation the solid rock and we make this prayer in jesus mighty name amen amen and amen so this week we began a teaching that I entitled Lessons from Jacob, the God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We, we, we picked it up from the book of Romans where the Bible says, and Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Now, before I proceed any further, you allow me to make these few remarks. Last year, when the pandemic first hit, so this is not in the sermon, but last year when the first pandemic first hit, Kenya, for instance, it was in the month of March, uh, when adjustments start, were starting to be made, etc., etc., the first incidents in Kenya, and a lot of things happened, and then you will agree with me that most ministries, most churches went online, most schools went online, some businesses started to embrace the online platform, etc., etc., and I remember in a particular uh, time, my first time to see a premiered video, I think it was either Dr. Walea Kinyemi or Divine Worship Ministries, but I think it was Dr. Walea Kinyemi. And I was intrigued. I was like, wow, he premier in a manisha nini. Actually, I've never seen the word before then. I've never seen it in Facebook or YouTube before that time. So I was very intrigued and I went to Google what is premier in Facebook and I saw and I was like, wow, this is quite interesting. So it is actually not going live, but it is almost as good as going live, etc. My brother has ever shared how we came to first embrace it as a slice of today. And the rest is history. Yesteryear also, Apostle David Juma of Life Church International, the Apostolic House, made this statement. And I've never actually forgotten it. It was in between his sermon, and I was like, wow, that doesn't make sense. But now I can see the practicability of it. This is what he said. Alisema ministries can actually come together and buy or purchase an asset. For instance, a camera, a PA system, etc., etc., the lapel mic, etc. They can come together, con they can come together, consolidate finances, and purchase an asset and rotate it amongst themselves. I hope you are getting it. So for instance, three ministries can come together. Let's say they can't purchase a camera alone, so they combine their effort and they purchase one camera. And then, for instance, this ministry can record theirs on Tuesday, how we're going to record on Friday, how we're going to record on Saturday morning, and then they now premiere it during now their weekly meetings, etc., etc. And I was like, ah, yeah, it makes sense. In a ministry, if you want to keep yake, what I about. But today, I can see the practicability of it. It is worth your attention to go to Google and search ministrykit.org, ministrykit.org, and you will find a platform that you can actually get assistance as a ministry or a church. As a CEO, Pengine in high school, not high school, university, as a ministry, there's a difference between a ministry and a church, as a church, etc., etc. So you can actually get to 
enjoy services that as an in-house you're not strongly suited for it or you don't have the prowess or the know-how so it is worth your very attention so back to our teaching romans chapter number nine jacob i loved and Esau i hated and this the bible continues to say it continues to explain itself so that it can accomplish god's design of preordination preordination and we picked it up we took two lessons from the good the new the sorry and we took two lessons from the book of genesis in order that god's purpose of election might continue it's god's election god's election so we took Two lessons in our previous broadcast, lessons from Jacob. And number one, we saw ya kuamba, mandiko natobia kuamba. Rebecca, the wife of Isaac, went to inquire of the Lord what is happening because there was, if I can say, disturbance in her womb. I love Mungu akamuambia, there are two nations in your womb, there are two people in your womb. And it so happened to be, ya kuamba kiza, they were found to be twins. And Isaac came out, uh, Jacob, uh, Esau came out first, Jacob came out second. With his hand holding his brother's foot so he was a fighter so we need to signify our our lives it needs to be a mark in all our lives that we are fighting to attain what god has raised us to attain and everything that we have actually as at now we can actually sustain it in the same posture number two anything that jacob did, did in his life he had the very future in mind so when his brother comes to ask for soup and we might actually come we were actually looking at that question if you can act it out it doesn't make sense the whole of next week the next of the next one month of something like he asked for a meal and for him to get that meal what he needed to part with was his birthright so he had the future in mind he was majoring on the majors and minoring on the minors so we'll pick it up another lesson from genesis chapter number 28 genesis chapter number 28 from verses number 13 genesis 28 from 13 the Bible says, and behold, the Lord stood above it. So what is this? This is Jacob's dream where he is fleeing from his brother. He's going to Laban's house and he sleeps for the night. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east to the north and to the south and in you your offspring shall all the families and in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed behold i am with you and will keep you wherever you go and i will bring you back to this land for i will not leave you until i have done what i have promised then jacob awoke from his sleep and said surely the lord is in this place and i did not know it and he was afraid and said how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. I love that phrase, this is the gate of heaven. Wherever a sanctuary has been built and it has been dedicated to God, that is actually a gate to heaven. When you go to that place, you transact with the heavens. You can erect a, an altar in your house and it is actually a gate to heaven. It is not a mere sitting room, a mere bedroom, a mere meeting prayer closet, a mere prayer center, a mere mountain where you go to seek the house of God, but it is actually the gate of heaven. The Bible says in verses number 18, so early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat, clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. 
Abraham gave a tenth, he's pledging, pledging to give a tenth. If God will see him through, Akirudi, Bwana Yesu, Asifi. The third thing, the third lesson we can preach from Jacob's life is this. In all his life, it is signified by him living, building altars like his fourth, his grandpa Abraham. He's a man of encounters with God. He's a man signifying and marking his life with building altars for God. Number two, he's a man of encounters. Praise be to God. Not just one. You know, this is the first that is recorded. That's actually where we have picked it from. Uh, and then now God is speaking to him, etc., etc. This is not his last. Many of the times we have had encounters with God, maybe he's giving us a promise, maybe he's giving us an assurance, maybe he's answering a prayer and we stop it at that. That is why we we'll hear of people who have very powerful testimonies like Kimi. The sad story is that that is the only encounter that they had of Christ. What we should be moving from, how we should be escalating our lives is that it should be from glory to glory. Yakwamba, when we have the first encounter, the first experience, the first move with God, we need to make it not the last. Praise be to God. And we can see it, the day that he's actually going back to meet his brother, he's found wrestling with an angel. He was wrestling with a certain man. So it means this is his second and actually it's not this like in yeah 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 it is the second because the other one that he had was a dream where the bible narrates how he will uh, loot his uh, stepfather laban those are my ones but 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 he, he actually narrates to his wife how i will transact in this business for me to be successful and fruitful etc etc so this needs to be something that is imprinted in our hearts. Yakwamba, when we go for a certain conference and we have a mighty move of God, we should make sure it is not our last. Wherever you fellowship, wherever you go to Bible study, etc., etc., you have experienced God before and may it not be the last. Raise altars for God. When you go to your first workplace, and something works out for good using and and you can actually see the mighty hand of god in it you need to ensure you need to make sure that one he or see you praise be to god you need to ensure that that is not the last one. and this we see in the life of jacob we also can pick it yakwamba it is in god it is in god's desire for us to make vows in our lives. You can pledge to God. Na umuambie, mimi ningependa kukutumikia pamoja na familia yangu while you are yet a bachelor. So you are vowing ya kwamba the spouse that I will marry. You are vowing ya kwamba the children that you will get. You will raise them in the ways of God, in the fear of God, that they will not worship a strange God. They will not serve a strange God. They will not serve a strange deity. They will not worship a strange deity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis 35. The Bible says, And God said to Jacob, Arise, go to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. Where we have just read. So Jacob said to his household, and to all who are with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. And let us arise and go to Bethel so that I may make there an altar to the Lord God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they came to Jacob and all the foreign gods and they had... So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the terribini tree that was near Shechem. 
And as they journeyed, the terror from God fell upon the cities that were around them. So they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, which is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan. He and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel. Because there God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. And Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died. And she was buried at an oak below Bethel. So he named it Alon Bakar. Amen, amen, amen. So that is another place, uh, that is another instance where he's going to actually visit the altar that he had built. It is interesting to note by his act of obedience and responding to God's instruction, what resulted is that every nation that heard of him feared him. Praise be to God. People will know that you are a worshiper of the true living God and they will not dare mess with you. Why? Because a report will go ahead of you and fear will strike them. Praise be to God. Amen, amen, and amen. Jacob, while he is living with Laban, remember the Bible narrates he worked seven years and then he was given Leah. He worked seven years, he was given Rebecca. He worked another, so not as 14 years, so he worked another six years for, 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 for Kutukua Mali. Yeah. So the first 14 were just for wives, but he didn't have actually any property per se. So he worked six years with a contract with Laban, Yakuamba, Kile, Kila Mnyamambayo, Itaza, Speckled or Spotted, Itakua Yangu, the pure ones, the pure breeds with none of this shall be yours. And then the Bible says, and he looted Laban. Alimpokonya maliake, such that his brothers, the brother is the sons of Laban, he has robbed us of our inheritance. Praise be to God. Something that I would like us to pick, and actually I've done it in a previous broadcast, that's why I won't actually be reading scriptures in regards to the same, but I would like us to quote it, Nyakwamba, Jacob was a hard working laborer. He labored for everything that he owned when he was walking out of the house of labor. Everything that he had, he can attest, I put in labor in it. And he was so audacious that one time he's giving an account. I repaid it from my own. When I repaid it from my own. And I said, I have spent nights outside my tent. Nikiangalia tu mifugo wako. Nimechapo na marini, nimechomo na jua. Nikiangalia mifugo wako. I have labored to the best of my ability that you have not experienced any loss in my account. Praise be to God. I can't stress this enough. Ya kwamba, we are all stewards. We are all laborers in God's vineyard. So it is expected and required of us to also exercise and portray this feature. And what is it? Yakuamba, we need to be hardworking, honest laborers in God's vineyard. To our employers here on earth. Paul writes a letter and then he says, Yakuamba, wewe ambaye ni mfanyikazi na umeajiriwa na mtu ambaye na mcha mungu na mwagopa mungu kama wewe, then... It is, it is actually a commendable thing. It is a noble thing and you need not to exploit it. That's how actually he puts it. Don't exploit that relationship. Alafu anendelea na kusema ya kwamba yule mfanjikazi ya mbaya ameandikwa kazi.
uh, uh, ball game, maybe a, a remark to say. So verses number 14, the Bible says, And Israel stretched out his right, his right hand and laid it on the head of Ephraim. Who was the younger, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, crossing his hands, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the boys. And in them let my name be carried on, in the name of my father Abraham and Isaac. that will overshadow these two, that will make these two small. Ikitoka kwa baba, it is what will count eventually. Praise be to God. Listen to this. So, Jacob is actually blessed. Like in the first two instances, number one, he outwits his brother. Number two, he steals through the help of his mother. And then he flees. He's forced to flee. We all know the story. The rest is history. This time, he's blessing the sons of his family.